Welcome back to this video lecture series on data structure and algorithms. Today we'll be learning about what is linked list. So let's start. Well, linked list is a linear data structure which consists of a group of nodes in sequence which is divided in two parts. We have already known about linked list from our previous video. So let us just know in a bit details. For linked list, each node of it has two fields. One is a data field where data elements are stored and another one is pointer field where address of the next node is stored and thus the linked list forms a chain. First node of a linked list is called the head node and the pointer field of the last node contains a null pointer. As you can see in the diagram, A is the head node and D is the last node, that is why D points to null. A, B, C and D are the data fields of each of the nodes of the linked list and the pointer field of the node D points to null. Unlike arrays, linked list elements are not stored at contiguous locations. The elements are linked using pointers. Now, let us have a comparative discussion on linked list versus array. First, let us see the advantages linked list has over array. The first one is linked list is a dynamic in nature. That is, memory for linked list can be allocated when there is a requirement for it. Second one, the insertion and deletions of any kind of data elements into a linked list can be done very easily because in the case of array we have to either shift or shrink the array elements which is time and memory consuming. The third point is the linked list reduces access times. Also due to the dynamic nature of linked list stacks and queues can also easily be executed using linked list. Apart from these advantages, we can also encounter some disadvantages for linked list. Like, as there is an extra pointer field attached to every node of the linked list, an extra memory requirement is always an overhead for linked list. Also, like in array, we can access any data element using just only the index. Here, for linked list, such random access cannot be done. Let us see on some of the applications of linked list. The first one is that many dynamic data structures like stacks, queues and graphs can easily be implemented using linked list. Insertion of any element at the beginning or at the end of the list is possible using linked list. Unlike array, we don't have to shift the data elements in order to add any element at the beginning or at the end of the list. Also, for the case of linked list, the size of the list needs not to be known beforehand. Now let us come to this part where we can discuss about the types of linked list. We can have three different type of linked lists. First one singly linked list, second doubly linked list and third circular linked list. Starting with singly linked list. In singly linked list, there's a data field and a single pointer field that contains the address of the node next in the sequence. The pointer field of the last node contains null pointer as we have already known from the definition of linked list. Now, let us understand the singly linked list by a real life example. Suppose there's a teacher in school who wants to take viva of the students and he calls the students by a group of three. So suppose these three, ten and two are the roll numbers of three different students of a group. One thing that we want here is that every student should know the roll number of the next student of his or her group. So if we want that a group should be made using so if we want a group should be made containing all these three students. So roll number three must know roll number 10 and roll number 10 must know roll number two. 
So if we put a link between roll number 3 and roll number 10 and a link between roll number 10 and roll number 2, we can successfully do this. That's where singly linked list comes into play. The pointer field of the first node, that is the node which contains 3 in its data part, points to the node in which 10 is stored in the data field. Again, the second node points to the node in which data field is filled by roll number 2. Next comes doubly linked list. In doubly linked list, there's a data field but two pointer fields which contain the addresses of the node next in the sequence and also the node previous in the sequence. The next pointer field of the last node and the previous pointer field of the first node contain null pointer. Suppose in the previous example, a group of three students comes for the viva and in the middle of the whole viva, the teacher wants to call roll number 10 again while he was taking the viva over roll number 20. And calling of any student can only be done by a student only. So here, as these three students are connected in the sequence of a doubly linked list, so roll number 20 also knows where roll number 10 is, just like roll number 10 knows where roll number 20 is. Again, while taking the vibe of roll number 30, if the teacher wants to call roll number 20, roll number 30 can easily call roll number 20 as there's a link between roll number 30 to 20 and again roll number 20 to 30. Next comes the circular linked list. In circular linked list, there's a data field and a single pointer field that contains the address of the node next in the sequence. The pointer field of last node contains address of the first node or head node. Let's take the same example again. So suppose this teacher takes viva of this group containing three students having roll numbers 3, 10 and 2. But the teacher wants to keep a proper track of all the students who are giving viva to him. So once he is done with all these three students, he needs to check whether the group has actually been taken viva completely. So what he does, he asks the last student of the group to know the first student's roll number in the group. Now as there's a link between the last node and the first node, that is the last roll number guy knows the guy with the first roll number. So the information can easily be fetched from the last student. And that's where circular link list can be very helpful. Next we'll be coming to this representation of link list. A linked list is represented by a pointer to the first node of the linked list, which is called the head node. Each node of linked list at least contains two parts. One is data, another one is pointer to the next node. We will shortly be seeing on how to create a linked list by coding. But before coding, let us know a bit about traversal of linked list. Traversal of linked list is nothing but is a process where each node of the linked list will be traversed or visited and the data field of each node will be printed. So let's now jump on to the coding part and let us create a program where we will create a linked list and we will traverse the linked list. So I have opened my IDE and I'll now start coding. In this particular program what we want to do is we want to create a linked list, a very simple linked list and want to traverse it. In order to do this, we will first create three different nodes of the linked list. We will assign values to the data fields of the linked list nodes and then we will traverse the linked list and print out the values. So let us start. Let us just first save this file. So let's start coding. Hashtag include studio. So first, we will define the structure of each of the node of the linked list. So for that, let us create the struct node. We will have two fields here. One is an integer data 
another one is a pointer that will again point to a node. So struct node star, and I will name the pointer as next. Then we will straight jump on to creation of linked list. So we will have this our main program. In here, what we will first do, we will declare three nodes. So let us just do it struct node first we will create the head node and we will initiate it with a null value just like this head node we will create two more nodes and let me just change the names here one will be second and one will be third. Now, as we have already seen that linked list is dynamic in nature. So now we want to create three nodes. So we want memory requirement for only three nodes. And in this part, we will allocate memory to the three needed nodes. So how to do that? First, the node name, then struct node star. We'll use a malloc here, size of struct node. And the same thing will be repeated for the other two nodes. So let's just copy it and paste it. We'll just change the name here. So we are done with the memory allocations. Now we will allocate values to the data fields of the nodes and we'll make links between them. So how to do that? Simply take the name of the node head use this operator head and we can see the suggestion coming data. So and apart from giving a value to the data field, we'll also have to create the link between the nodes, right? So here we will try cut. So here what we want to do is we want the head node to point to the second node. So we will just type head again this operator and next the suggestion comes and we'll just write second here. In the same way, we will allocate values for other two nodes. So we'll just copy it and paste it two more times. And now for the second node, we will allocate the value as 10 and we want the second node to point to the third node. So third, same we want uh, the data value of the third node to be 2 and as third node is the last node here so we will give the pointer value here as null so here the creation of the linked list is completed now we will traverse it for that, we will create a function. Let's say traverse list. And what we'll do, we will put this head node at the, as the argument. So let us just define the function here. The function will have a void return type and the name will be traverse list. Inside the argument will be struct node star let's give any name now here okay this will be a small o now the logic for the traversing of the linked list is we will traverse the list until 
we get a node which contains a null value. So, a while loop will be used here where the condition will be while h not equal to null we will traverse the list. What we will do? We will just print the value so percentage d and we will just use this uh, uh, symbol here and the value will be h data. Now we want to specify null at the end of the list right. So for this we will create a condition where we will write if h next is equal to is equal to null that is it is the last node then we will simply print null and when all it is done we will assign the head node or the pointer to the head node as the next node in the sequence. So, this should do our purpose of creating the linked list and traversing it. So, let us just save it and let us just compile and run it. So, as we can see, we created a linked list. The data values were 3, 10 and 2 and as we can traversed it and as we have traversed it, we can see the output here 3, 10, 2. So that was how we created a linked list, we traversed a linked list. Thank you for watching this video and staying with us. See you next time.